BanjoBenClark.com. I'm Banjo Ben, your host on the website that teaches you how to play banjo and guitar. This week is Mandolin Week, and we're doing this beautiful fiddle tune, Chinkapin Hunting. I haven't known this song for a long time. Um, it's fairly recent learn from, from me. Uh, I learned it from the guys out at the store, and then I started hearing it at various places. I thought, I've really got to teach that. So as you see, we're going to cover a lot today. We're going to learn the basic melody for it. Then we're going to learn a more advanced solo for it. This has some really cool triplets in it. And then we'll learn how to play harmony to it. So you can grab your friend that has a mandolin and have some fun with this one. If you're watching on uh, YouTube or Facebook or somewhere like that, come on over to the site. Join as a Go Pit member. If you're watching as a Go Pit member already, then you have everything you need right here. Scroll down. You'll see your MP3 rhythm tracks that you can practice along uh, with me with this song, as well as the tabs for the harmony and the melody. Let's go. We have a whole lot to cover, so I'm going to move pretty quickly. Let's talk about the DNA of this fiddle tune. It's a common fiddle tune in that it has that A part and B part, and you repeat each one. But what's different about it is that the B part is so unique. It's It's got this um, kind of E minor type lick, and that's happening over a G chord, which E minor is the relative minor of the G, so it's just got some really neat theory stuff happening there. And what's also really cool is at the end of the B part, it does it wrap back around to the D chord. And that's what we're used to hearing in fiddle tunes. We're used to hearing it come back to the chord of the key that it's in. We're in the key of D, but it doesn't come back to that D chord. And so it makes it kind of awkward to end at the end of the B part. So that's why in my arrangement, I go back into a final A part and play through that a couple times because it just has more closure as an A part. So just something to think about as you play this song yourself. Let's go ahead and pull up the tab there. You'll see all the pick stroke directions beneath the notes. And uh, my first time through this, I'm going to play the melody about as basic and straightforward as I can. I just wanna hear what this song sounds like. And I want you to know that whenever we play with the harmony, this is the exact same notes that I play there, except for the very end of the song, we'll have a, a special lick there that I'll show you. We've got just a couple notes pick up, and then measure three sounds like this. And then you're gonna slide up to that A note. So. And it's almost like it answers a, or ask a question and then we're going to answer it here in measure five. Isn't that so pretty? So question and answer. And then we're just going to repeat that. So it's kind of like a little A part within an A part as we go to measure seven. Oh, missed the slide. And then you'll see there at the end of measure 10, I have those two notes that says repeat only. That's because I'm just playing those notes to go back into the A part to repeat. If we were playing the A part for the second time and going into the B part, I wouldn't play those two notes. Okay, so pretty straightforward, right? But as we look at the B part, this one has a little bit more movement. And like I said, the chords are different. We have three measures of G, and then we have this really cool lick that, that happens around um, almost like a G pentatonic scale. Then it has one measure of A at the end. So three measures of G into one measure of A. Now, um, this first time that we're going to play through this, this first four bars of the B part, I'm going to have a little break in this pattern. On that E string, we've got a quarter note there. But then as we kind of answer that in the second half of the B part, we're going to keep that pattern going. That, that sounds really cool. And again, that ends on an A chord. So it doesn't have a lot of closure there. So what's neat about this little pattern, it gives us lots of opportunity to improvise around that as well. Okay, so we've gone over the basic melody here. What I'd like to do next is play through the basic melody slowly. We'll just play one time through the A part, one time through the B part, so that you can follow along with me. And then I wanna teach you 
the uh, more advanced solo and look at the harmonies. Let's play the basic melody slowly. We're just gonna play one time through the A part and one time through the B. If you were performing it, you would repeat it. You'd play two A's in a row and two times through the B. Here we go, we'll come in on the fourth beat together. One, two, three, four. to the B part. Ready to go. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you've got a handle on that, or if you don't, just Repeat that little section. Remember that you can control the speed of the playback by clicking the settings in the bottom right portion of the video. If you're watching somewhere else besides BanjoBenClark.com, I'd love to have you on board. Come over and check it out as a Gold Pick member. You get hundreds of lessons, including this one. If you're watching here on the site, let's jump into that advanced solo. <laughs> 